So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the title of my talk, as you see, is the uh, investigation of isomeric states in fluidified rather podium. Uh, uh, here is the outline of my talk. So first, some uh, motivations behind this work. Then a brief description of the setup and the experiment. Then I will briefly describe uh, how we characterize the detection setup uh, using GN4 and uh, uh, show some results and uh, finally conclude the talk. So uh, the motivation is we want to understand uh, how the nuclear force behaves uh, when both charge and the mass uh, are extreme. Uh, this type of nuclei are generally called, uh, known as the super nuclei. So if we look at, uh, at our familiar nuclear chart where the nuclei are plotted uh, uh, as a function of their proton number and the neutron number, the super nuclei are located uh, at the very top of the nuclear chart. <clears throat> so the protons inside the uh, inside the nucleus, the protons and neutrons, they occupy discrete uh, orbitals, creating in, in homogeneity in the density of states. So this we call the, the this clustering of orbitals we call them cells, and uh, this quantum cell effects actually protects the super heavy nuclei from instantaneous fission. Uh, otherwise, they would have uh, like completely fission the, because of this immense uh, Coulomb repulsion among the protons. So this can be understood if we look at the um, potential uh, surface uh, as a function of the uh, deformation. So according to the, in the picture of the liquid, liquid drum model where it assumes uh, uniform distribution of uh, nucleons in the phase space, uh, we, we see that uh, the behavior of the potential surface is quite flat. Uh, when, the, when the cell fraction is taken into account, uh, there is a clear uh, depression in the, uh, in the in the potential uh, energy surface, uh, uh, you know, uh, forbidding uh, the nucleons, uh, forbidding the nuclei uh, to be uh, from from spontaneous fission. Sorry. So uh, so the eff uh, the effect of this uh, cell correction can be is illustrated, for example, in this figure. So where the lifetime of the uh, half life of the of the nuclei uh, are plotted against the uh, against the fissility parameter, which is which is, uh, is the computation between the uh, nuclear force and the uh, and, and the Coulomb repulsion here. And we see that in the liquid drop model, this is uh, the lifetime beyond the, the Rutherfordium. Uh, that one, uh, 104, the lifetime falls uh, below the time required to form a chemical element. So to uh, explain this trend, uh, the observed trend uh, of this uh, of this nuclei, of this heavy and super heavy nuclei, uh, we need to take into account the cell corrections. So here is the <coughs> figure showing the magnitude of cell corrections energies for this heavy and uh, super heavy. And the and their stabilities as a consequence of this cell correction uh, is shown in this uh, 3D figure. So we see uh, our spherical W magic led to it, uh, forming stable mountains near uh, with uh, nearby nuclei, and then we have the uh, deformed uh, enhanced stability in the uh, in the deformed region uh, at Z equal to 108 uh, and uh, and equal to 162. And the next uh, predicted uh, cell closure at J equal to 114 and, and equal to 184, uh, predicting the existence of this, uh, the so called the island of stability inhabited by the spherical uh, super heavies. So these super heavies are predicted to have a very long lifetime. Uh, but how uh, the position uh, of this. Uh, Island of stability is not uh, cert uh, is not certain as uh, different uh, modern nuclear theories uh, predict uh, differently. So this serves also another motivation for uh, for doing uh, super heavy research. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, the, the reaching uh, so uh, reaching this island of stability is not easy. Since uh, 1970s, uh, scientists have been looking uh, for. Uh, this uh, so long lived super heavies uh, in nature, for example, in uh, geological sites, uh, ores, and cosmic rays, and also uh, attempting to synth 
synthesize them in the laboratories, uh, uh, which have culminated in the production of the organisation with uh, 118 protons, the heaviest man-made element. In the synthesis process, however, as you see here, uh, the, as we go up in the atomic number, uh, uh, the cross sections drop uh, drastically. So uh, it is more reasonable to do st spectroscopic studies in the region of uh, the lower uh, mass region to reveal their uh, underlying cell structures. And in this region uh, as well, uh, the experimental data is uh, quite scarce uh, as, as shown in this uh, color coded uh, chart. The lighter the color is, uh, the less is the number of uh, states known for this nuclear. So what uh, sort of structure do we expect in this uh, region? Uh, here is the predicted cell structure of the <clears throat> of this nuclei. So figure showing the left and the right for the proton and the uh, neutron, and the single particle uh, energies as a function of the quadruple deformation. <clears throat> So as stated before, the inhomogeneity in, in the density of states uh, creates greater stability. Uh, for spherical nuclei, uh, the, our, uh, the, the large gaps uh, for this uh, led to eight, and the next spherical, uh, spherical op uh, gap opening uh, at around uh, J equal to one, uh, at J equal to 114 and N equal to 184. And at some deformation uh, at, uh, an unstability for this uh, nuclei at z equal to 108 and n equal to 164 and in in, in the in our case in the region of our interest uh, at z equal to 108 10, 100 and n equal to 152 <clears throat> so uh, in the case of the 255 we have uh, 104 protons and uh, and 151 neutrons if we fill them uh, in their respective orbitals because of pairing, the ground state uh, is, uh, is predicted to be uh, nine half uh, from the last anti uh, neutron. And indeed, uh, this was uh, measured experimentally from laser spectroscopy in the case of uh, 53 nodosium. Uh, so here I mark the uh, relevant orbitals for, for this study. Since uh, these uh, nuclei are deformed, we expect them to rotate. And uh, and uh, here I saw, uh, sorry, this slide is like this. Okay, the formula. Okay, the formula is gone. Okay. Uh, so uh, so based on because of this rotation, uh, the the rotation uh, rotational bands are formed on the on the uh, on the single particle state. And uh, they follow a, a, a characteristic pattern, and uh, I don't know somehow the the formula is not is displaced. Sorry for this. And uh, so uh, basically, uh, we have uh, <coughs> the i equal to the here i is the nuclear uh, nuclear spin, and on the symmetry axis we have the projection called k. Uh, so, uh, so here I saw for the, 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 the electromagnetic transitions for these two, uh, uh, two cases where uh, I equal to uh, K, uh, K not equal to zero and K equal to zero. And they, they, they are transitions, uh, they are, the, 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 the excitations for, uh, uh, is governed by the internal uh, structure of the nucleus. Uh, the B, B M1 and B2 transition prob probabilities. Uh, and then uh, the, in the case of uh, M1 transitions, the GK and GR gyromagnetic uh, residues. Uh, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's so confu confused with this uh, loss, of, uh, loss of my uh, slides, uh, loss of my slide here. Okay, so. so so basically, the uh, uh, okay. So in the excitation process, when the, the there involves a change in the delta k, we have uh, k isomers. Uh, so there is another selection rule. Uh, the, the 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 change in the delta k. Uh, 
must be less than or equal to the multiple order of the transition. But if the transition violates uh, the, this case selection rule, we call them the k-hindered uh, forbidden transitions. Uh, and the and where uh, new is the degree of forbiddenness. So the hindrance, uh, the amount of hindrance is usually measured by this, uh, uh, by the ratio of the, uh, 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 by the ratio of the measured uh, uh, lifetime to the waste of a single particle uh, estimate. And uh, the an another uh, important uh, quantity that is used in the hindrance factor is the ethnu based on the Lipnos uh, systematics, which claims that the, uh, which claims that if there, there is a change in K by one unit, the hindrance is increased by a factor of uh, 100. Uh, in the case of uh, 255 Rutherfordium, uh, we expect high key isomers uh, since they have already been observed in the neighboring uh, nuclei. The key isomers are interesting because they give information about the single particle states near the Fermi level. And uh, also their decay can populate the states that are not normally accessible to, uh, to the reaction. Uh, so if we look at the neighboring uh, Novelium 254, there is an eight minus isomer uh, suggested to have uh, uh, to have this uh, either uh, eight, eight minus, uh, to have this uh, neutron configuration or the proton configuration. Uh, the nature of this eight minus configuration is still uh, not clear. The eight minus of uh, the eight minus uh, isomer was observed to decay to an intermediate structure structure involving uh, two uh, quasi-proton uh, excitations from seven half minus to one half minus, which then promptly decay to the ground state. And uh, analysis of the recent data of uh, Rutherfordium 256 from Dubna has established a five minus isomer involving a two <coughs> quasi-proton excitation from one uh, minus uh, the nine half plus state that decay to the ground state be a high uh, energy electro uh, electromagnetic transition. So uh, we expect uh, three quasi-particle states, uh, 19 half plus forming from this uh, con con uh, coupling of the odd neutron at nine half to the two quasi-proton uh, contributions uh, minus the five minus and uh, 25 half plus from the coupling of the odd neutron to the two quasi-proton eight minus. <clears throat> and this is uh, indeed uh, also suggested in the case of uh, 253 novelium. Uh, now I come to the experiment. So the super heavy nuclei are produced by fusion evaporation reactions. Uh, <clears throat> so this is illustrated in this figure. In this reaction, uh, two lighter nuclei are fused to form a compound nucleus, which then uh, cools down by emitting uh, neutrons uh, and then uh, gamma rays also. And then in the final product uh, is then called the uh, fusion evaporated residue. However, this is the most unlikely picture uh, uh, as in this kind of reactions, we have other dominating reactions uh, like, uh, like uh, quasi fission, 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 and uh, transfer products, plum, uh, excitations and a lot of the scattered beams. So our nuclei of interest are like uh, needles in haystack. That's why we need a good separator. And we use the separator called cells to filter the evaporation residues uh, from the undesired background. The schematic uh, of the separator is shown here uh, with the real picture on the below. Uh, <clears throat> the separator consists of, uh, of, uh, of uh, two uh, identical velocity filters and uh, two focusing lenses. So uh, the first, uh, the job of the first focusing lens is to uh, focus the cone of the reaction products coming out of the target uh, and into the, uh, into the filters where they get separated based on the velocities. And then the job of the second focusing lens is to convert the filter uh, evaporation residues uh, onto the uh, detection system called Gabriella. So uh, the Gabriela project was started in 2004, and since then uh, it has been uh, up upgraded uh, gradually. 
a uh, major upgrade was done in 2016. And here I show you some pictures of the, uh, of the present setup. Gabriela consists of a time of flight detector, uh, which gives a marker to, the <clears throat> to identify the recoils from the decay events. Uh, surrounding it, we have, uh, uh, <clears throat> we have the uh, 128 by 128 uh, silicon strip, double-sided silicon strip detectors for implanting our recoils. And then surrounding it, we have uh, eight uh, uh, smaller DSSDs of 16 by 16 strips, uh, forming a tunnel-like uh, configuration to detect the escaping alpha particles, uh, uh, charged, other charged particles, uh, electrons, uh, and the fission, uh, fission fragments as well. And then we have, uh, in the, inside the chamber, we have a very thin uh, aluminum window inserts for the germanium uh, detectors. So we have uh, four coaxial germanium detectors. And, uh, and behind the DSSD, we have uh, a clover consisting of uh, four crystals. And each of these uh, germanium detectors are equipped with uh, VGO seals, which can be used either in suppression mode or veto mode. So the experiment uh, in our, uh, in the experiment, in our experiment, we have produced this nuclei using uh, the titanium beam on the left target. Uh, to, uh, we had two experimental campaigns, one in May of 2017 and in and Tobor, and these are the sum of the characteristics of the beam and the target. So uh, the uh, in each of these run, uh, we have uh, intense uh, beam coming out of it's intense titanium beam coming out of this U400 cyclotron hitting on the rotating target. Here I see the figure of the target wheel consisting of six banana shaped uh, slots for the let uh, for the let and then the reaction products are separated in the cells and goes through the deflector uh, the deflector was used to uh, basically avoid the the beam and the beam dump uh, and then goes through the top and in, and get implanted in the implantation detector where they decay and get uh, uh, and the and the decay pro decay products are detected in the in the in the, in the Gabriella setup so the Gabriela setup detectors need to be characterized uh, here, and we did in uh, uh, using GR4. There are some basic ing in, uh, ingredients required to perform simulations in GR4. For example, first define the uh, experimental setup, like sensitive volume detector. So a 3D figure uh, is shown here. A 3D figure of the, the setup is shown here. Like, uh, and I thank uh, Carl, my co-supervisor, who has uh, built this uh, detailed uh, geometry uh, geometry code for our setup. And so, after defining uh, the geometry, we one defines the primary particles, uh, their uh, type, uh, energy, and their position inside the in, in the position in the impl impl implantation detector. And one defines the physics list. Which, is, uh, which construct the particles and and they also uh, construct the processes, electromagnetic uh, process, particle decay and radioactive decay. So, but the, the radioactive decays in GM4 has some limitations. Uh, it's because the uh, some uh, some uh, fluorescence and other uh, data files are not. Uh, are not there in, in GM4. Uh, uh, data files beyond Permium are, are not there. So, and there are some hard code limits uh, set in the source code up to this Permium. So that's why the key of the reductive key uh, above J equal to 100 uh, is, uh, is not proper, properly done. To, to go around this problem, uh, people uh, like my supervisor, uh, they they hard code the whole atomic uh, relaxation process in the in the in the in their code, and then the other group uh, in Lung, they what they use they use the built-in library of the Gion4, but they modify uh, they trick the the Gion4 uh, by by modif uh, by saying that uh, the light lighter elements uh, mimic the heavy elements. 
and, and also they modify the binding analysis and occupancy item. So in, in, in this work, what we did is we extended uh, using the data given in June 4, like from Z equal to 900, uh, Z equal to 90 to 100. We extrapolated the ozone and fluorescence data up to other podium, and we modified the source code to accept, to, to properly simulate uh, the reductive decays uh, beyond the uh, permanent. And we added some uh, information on so the atomic cell data and electronic binding analysis as well. So, uh, <clears throat> simulations also require the position distributions of the evaporation residues. So, uh, we use these two here, uh, two experimental uh, position distributions, which can be easily uh, obtained from the experiment from the strip number. The, here I show the difference between the uh, position distribution of the Radafodium and uh, which is from our experiment and 209 uh, from a calibration run. And uh, since the separator was uh, set up for the set for the 255 Radafodium, we have uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the position distribution of 209 radium to be very, uh, to be off center. And uh, <clears throat> Using these position distributions, we did not observe uh, significant effects uh, on the gamma ray and the electron detection efficiencies. Well, uh, what about the implantation depth? So we we did not uh, see any effect uh, uh, of the implantation depth on the gamma ray detection efficiencies, uh, but we saw huge impact uh, on the on the electron detection efficiencies. So as we, uh, okay. so as we uh, go, go, go down in energy, the, uh, the, the efficiency of the, the efficiency of the electron decreases with increasing uh, the quantity on that. So to, how do we extract the implants on that determine estimate uh, the implantation depth using gen 4 So we know that the escaping particle, uh, alpha particles are sensitive to the implantation depth because of the energy deposition is dependent on the length they traverse in the silicon detector. Uh, so here I saw the experimental energy spectrum of this escaping alpha particles uh, with the region that are not twin uh, to, ind <coughs> to indicate the, the, the length they traverse in the silicon. Then we simulate the alpha decay scheme using the experimental XY distributions and by placing the ions uh, at various implantation depths using, uh, assuming it's a Gaussian type uh, depth profile in, uh, in, in each of these rounds. And, uh, and then we compare the simulated alpha spectrum uh, with the experimental one to obtain a chi-square value. And then find the values uh, that gives the minimum uh, chi-square. So here is the uh, 2D plot showing the chi-square values as a function of the implantation depth. Uh, we can clearly see a uh, region of um, mid for minimum uh, small values. So uh, and we obtained the uh, uh, implantation depth of 2.7 micrometer uh, from the simulation and, and, our, uh, and our method is quite sensitive. Uh, uh, as you can see that if we cellularly implant, uh, if the implantation is too shallow uh, and too deep, the, or too deep, the, the, the escaping and the spectra are quite different. So using the ex experimental uh, position distributions and the and the implantation depth we obtained, we obtained the absolute uh, gamma ray detection efficiency for the germanium detector and the electron detection efficiency of the uh, tunnel detectors. Uh, thanks to our calibration run, uh, we, which produced uh, 117 uh, microsecond 209 isomer, which consists of these two uh, 238 uh, uh, KB M2 transition and 644 uh, KB E2 transitions. And this could be used to validate the simulation results. And 
after taking into account the summing effects in, inside the detectors, we see that uh, our experimental points uh, lie uh, close to the uh, simulation curves, except for this point, which is which could be due to some threshold effects in the tunnel detectors in this run, during this run. And then we have uh, some, we have done the same exercise in the case of gamma rays, uh, when no add back was uh, considered. Uh, and we also see uh, good agreement with the with the with the experimental values. No, now I uh, so from this study I we concluded that the radiation multiplicity uh, we had only two cascades and which was a bit uh, which was still a big problem problematic to extract this uh, the, uh, the 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 values and. Uh, uh, ready, uh, and then if we have a, multi, uh, a lot of uh, big cascade, we have a problem in uh, compact and efficient array like Gabriela because of the because of the you know, summing effects. And then uh, that's why it's uh, it's better to use uh, simulations uh, to take care of the summing effects automatically uh, to, to for the data analysis. So now I show you some. Uh, results. Uh, here I show you the experimental ritual decay correlation plot. The, on the particle axis, we have the time difference between the implantation of a ritual uh, and its subsequent decay in the same picture. And on the horizontal axis, we have the energy uh, from a decay in KV. In this experiment, uh, the fission uh, appears, uh, the fission products appears as the overflows. Uh, because uh, of the gain set for the DSSD. Uh, we noticed the 255 uh, Rotterdam alpha peak uh, having the same lifetime as the fission products. And then we have, uh, when we measure the, when we feed the lifetimes, we extract, we can extract the lifetime and the branching residues uh, that are comparable with the, uh, the, the measured life, half lives comparable with, are in agreement with the literature values. And we also observed the 1N and 3N channel where we see the detection of this, uh, uh, detection of this two, uh, 254 Rutherfordian nuclei is seriously affected by the, uh, by the 32 microsecond dead time of our, of our setup. And in the lower energy side, we have the isomeric signals so which we will, uh, I, I, I will come later. So what is known in uh, Rutherfordium, we have uh, uh, the GSI group detected this uh, 500 plus isomer uh, at about uh, 135 kb from the alpha, uh, alpha fine structure of 259 ciborgium to 255 Rutherfordium, which was in interpreted to be fiber plus uh, from the systematics of uh, previously studied and equal to 151 isotones. Uh, they also suggested two other uh, decays, uh, two other states, uh, the 11 half minus and the uh, one plus. Later, the GSI group, uh, the same group also detected two isomeric states. Uh, they observed three cascade uh, signals uh, in the implantation detector before the Rutherfordian decay. And based on some trend in the energy and the time matrix of the isomeric signals, uh, they could, uh, they, they, they suggested the lifetime and the excitation energy of the, of the, of the isomers they observed. And they also observed uh, very few gamma rays uh, in coincidence with these signals. So before showing our results, uh, how do we, I want to describe how we uh, detect the isomers. Imagine we have, a, we have an eight minus isomer decaying to zero plus. Uh, the E2 transitions will convert internally, leaving a hole in the atomic orbitals, uh, triggering a cascade of atomic processes. And the isomer will leave, uh, <clears throat> 
will be detected through the Jones calorimetric method. In the DSSD, the conversion electrons deposit some of its energy depending on the directions they are traveling. And then there is a partial and full energy uh, summation with this uh, conversion electron uh, energies uh, of the other electrons and the X-rays. Uh, so we, we, we call this uh, so summed signal as the C signal. If the C signal is above the DSS threshold, we have a chain like uh, evaporation residue C signal and the Rutherfordium ground state decay correlations. And then if it is below the DSS threshold, we have this uh, just the evaporation residue and the 255 Rutherfordium ground state decay correlation. So, uh, but thanks to our uh, germanium and the tunnel detectors, the isomers can still be detected, and we will call them as the evaporation residue gamma and the electron and the 255 Rutherfordium uh, correlations. But sometimes, because of the even though uh, the C signals would be above the DSS threshold, but still could be missed due, due to this uh, dead time. For example, uh, in this case, this if it is lower than the 32 microseconds, the CE signal, the CE signal of the first isomer will be lost. So uh, in our study, we observed uh, 27, uh, two isomeric decay correlations, uh, which have uh, different lifetimes. Uh, and the first isomer seems to have a longer lifetime. And, uh, and then if we see the energy, we, and they had the, uh, smaller energy. And then uh, the second isomer seems to have shorter lifetime, but with, uh, uh, not, uh, with, uh, uh, with large, uh, bigger energy gap. Moreover, uh, no gamma rays uh, or uh, electrons were seen in coincidence with the first uh, C1, but uh, some gamma rays and electrons were seen with the C2. So if we sum the uh, energies of the coincident C signal plus the gamma rays, uh, the energy of the gamma ray and the, uh, and the electrons, we, we get the energy of the, uh, of the or, or the step of the isomeric transition. So we, we call this, uh, let's say, Emax. So the, for the, uh, so the Emax of ISO2 is in this case, we found to be 1 .1, around 1.1 MeV and uh, and delta A between this uh, ISO 1 and ISO 2 is less than 200 kV. Uh, <clears throat> we have also observed 701 uh, single isomeric decay correlations. These C signals come in coincidence with uh, gamma rays uh, and the electrons and gamma rays that uh, some of these gamma rays were observed in the, with the second C previously in the two uh, correlation chain. And <clears throat> uh, in particular, this uh, 778 KV and four, uh, four, 543. However, the lifetime uh, does not uh, seem to match with the, uh, with the lifetime measure for this second CE2. This, uh, this lifetime, however, matches with the measured lifetime uh, for the in the case of uh, by the GSI group, uh, about uh, five, 50, about fifty microseconds, and uh, we 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 think that uh, in this spectrum we have uh, contributions from this uh, iso isomer as well. So this uh, CES spectrum is uh, quite complicated, uh, as there can be contribution from just uh, iso one. Uh, when ISO2 was not detected and ISO2, when ISO1 was not detected and ISO2 alone, and also from this ISO3. So that's why it's uh, at this point, it's hard to disentangle each of these contributions. So the possible decay scheme is we have two isomers, ISO1 and ISO2 separated uh, by 200 kV energy gap. And then ISO2 decays to the ground state of the 11 half minus state uh, using a high energy gamma transition. And then we have this uh, ISO3 uh, that was observed in before. Uh, 
Okay, so when uh, we did not detect any of the uh, CE signals in the implantation detector because of either because of the threshold or because of the that time, we could still detect them in the uh, germanium detector and the tunnel detectors. And we had uh, quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of, uh, the statistics was, was uh, relatively higher in this case. So, uh, in particular, we have uh, 778, 7, 708, and 102, and 170. So this 170, the nature of this 170, we could uh, determine just from the intensities. Uh, the, it's, it could not be because uh, M1, because we did not uh, observe a lot of X-rays, nor an E2, because we did not have enough counts uh, in this, uh, uh, for this, uh, element elect converted electrons. Uh, so, the, uh, so when we fitted the lifetime of this uh, on these electrons, we found the average lifetime to be 38 microseconds. Uh, so the lifetime of this individual lifetime, when we, when we did the lifetime study for this individual uh, gamma transitions, we see that the 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 lifetime uh, okay so the we see that the 102 is uh, uh, sticks out from the rest m uh, suggesting that it could be from uh, it, uh, it could be a from, from different isomers since uh, this high energy gamma lines uh, they, uh, they come from the second isomer second ce2 we suggest that this uh, this 102 is coming from the, uh, the ISO ISO 1 to ISO 2. So, if, uh, if so, based on the lifetime uh, measure, we 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 want to we ask uh, what delta k would give such lifetime, and uh, in the decay of ISO 2, uh, we can get an idea from the uh, get, get an idea of the of this change of this k quantum number from their lifetime. Uh, here I plotted the <clears throat> uh, k hindrance and internal conversion corrected uh, coefficients, uh, internal conversion coefficient corrected lifetime uh, for the E1, E2, uh, and M1 transitions for delta k equal to 4 and delta k equal to 5. And if we plot the, so if we see if we plot the lifetime, measure lifetime on top of this, we see that the, the uh, both for, uh, both delta k equal to four and delta k equal to five uh, are possible, and it's so this fits well with this uh, nineteen half plus uh, configuration, which can decay to the eleven half minus, uh, involving delta k equal to four, and when it decays to the ground state. Uh, it, invo uh, it involves delta k equal to five. Whereas, uh, uh, whereas in, in the decay of ISO one, uh, we are left with uh, this stupid uh, this twenty five uh, half state. This then decay to the nineteen half state uh, involving delta k equal to three. Uh, but uh, from our hindrance analysis, we we see that. Uh, uh, we see that the, the lifetime of this one or two uh, is rather high, uh, and it, it's uh, it, it it could be because it's not the pure, it, it could be because the statistics was low and the and the lifetime was not uh, properly measured. So, uh, in spite of that, we. Uh, it also can suggest that uh, this isomeric decay can involve a very low energy E2 transition. So uh, to simulate uh, in Geon 4, uh, one needs to give uh, excitation energies, branching ratios, and uh, uh, multipolarity and internet comparison coefficients. And uh, these mixing ratios uh, and the branching ratios uh, determined theoretically from this B, B M1 and B2 ratios. Uh, so the 
ground state band, uh, the GK values to build this ground state band, uh, ground state band uh, we, 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 uh, we took the GK values from the theory and the moment of inertia for the of this ground state band uh, is, uh, is taken from the known 253 novelium in the case uh, 253 novelium uh, isotope and then the moment of inertia for the 11 half minus band for, from the uh, 257 rather uh, isotope and the moment of inertia for the 19 half plus was adjusted to reproduce this uh, 102 kg transition uh, and we assume the quadruple uh, deformation to be to be to be constant using these uh, ingredients we have uh, simulated many different schemes to reproduce our experimental observables so in our uh, first scenario we we placed the the 25 half plus above the 19 half with a difference of uh, 200 kV as we observe a 98 kV transition in, an, in our experiment. And then the, uh, we, we, we assume that the seven, uh, 170 kV, uh, the, the 19 half plus isomer populates this 11 half minus band uh, using this uh, 170 kV transition. And then finally, this decay to the ground state uh, using the high, high energy tra uh, tra transitions. But uh, when we compare the simulation results with the experimental one, we saw that the, the intensity of the 170 kV was too, too much. So to reduce this intensity, uh, we, we suppose that the intensity is divided to the ground state band using this uh, very low energy E1, as we see some uh, 29 kV transition. This could be also from the, uh, this could be also due to the LX phase. And we still could not manage to reproduce this 170 kV. Uh, but we have some extra new lines which are not there in the experiment. So we, we discard this uh, scenario. So in the third scenario, we, um, have this 170 kV going to the 11 half minus, and then which decays to the ground state band using uh, via these uh, two high energy lines. And then the isomer also decays to the ground state band di directly. And note that in this case, uh, we, we have uh, changed the energy of the uh, 11 half minus uh, to the 600, to 632 which was different from the, which is a bit different, a bit higher from what was suggested in the, uh, from our bias spectroscopy. And we see that uh, <clears throat> it, uh, it produces rather well the, in the, uh, the gamma ray spectrum, except for the LX rays and this 150 kV line. So what about the, what about the Emax uh, from the, uh, for these uh, two isomers? We see that this <coughs> simulation reproduces uh, rather well the the shape of the uh, Emax that was observed experimentally in, in both cases, uh, ISO one and ISO two. And what about the electron spectrum, the tunnel detectors? We have <coughs> here I saw the contributions of this. Uh, first isomer, ISO1, and then uh, ISO2, and they, are, and they are some. And we still see some uh, deficiency in the, uh, the tunnel detectors. So uh, to, uh, to account for this defi uh, deficiency, we say uh, we adjust the excitation energy of this five half plus state to recover uh, this uh, deficiency and we place it to be at 150 and uh, which is uh, different from what was suggested uh, the, uh, from suggested from this uh, alpha, alpha spectroscopy and uh, after summing all their contributions we could 
uh, obtain uh, the, we could reproduce the tunnel spectrum. So how does uh, the gamma ray spectrum change with the additional uh, fiber plus? So here I show the contribution from each of these uh, isomers, so ISO 1, ISO 2, and then uh, ISO 3. So we have recovered the 150 line and some of the LX rays. And here is just the comparisons with, of the experiment with the simulation in addition uh, by adding the background, experimental background, since uh, in the simulations we don't have background. So what about the CD spectrum that is observed in the implantation detector? <clears throat> uh, we have, uh, as, uh, as was stated before, we have 701 uh, such single CD spectrum. So we take this spectrum because this is uh, with the highest uh, statistics. And using this number, uh, experimentally, with this uh, uh, number of uh, correlations, we could uh, establish the numbers uh, the population of the of this isomer, and these uh, populations in turn would reproduce this uh, shape of this uh, CD spectrum. So the contributions from the first isomer is shown here, and then the contributions from the second isomer, and the contributions of the third isomer, and when we sum them all together. Reproduces quite well the shape of this uh, C spectrum. So in the final scenario, we have uh, three isomers uh, with uh, uh, the 19 half plus uh, placed at, at uh, around 1.1 uh, MeV, uh, which, and then the uh, 25 half plus placed uh, uh, around 1.3 MeV, and then uh, and then the uh, five, uh, five up plus uh, spin isomer at 150 MeV. <clears throat> although the decay, I, I have to state that uh, although the decay of this, uh, the, the lower isomer is quite reassuring, reassuring but the, but this, uh, scheme is not uh, it's not quite certain so and uh, based on the number uh, based on the number of uh, isomers detected uh, isomers produced we could uh, uh, we could obtain the isomeric uh, population residues so uh, a measure of work was done in other thing uh, Adapting the general force simulations to, to model the decays of very heavy and uh, uh, super heavy nuclei. And this work was uh, instrumental in extracting the physical observables and interpreting the data. So we, we, we confirmed the existence of these three isomers in Radarfordium 255 and interpreted them to be uh, one spin isomer and the two, three quasi particle high, uh, high case states. Uh, but uh, the data obviously needs uh, confirmation. This could be probably uh, done using the pump spectroscopy for these high energy lines and the case spectroscopy with this lower threshold and this, uh, digital electronics to reduce the dead time and, and also the lower thresholds. And, and then maybe one could do also the alpha gamma uh, case spectroscopy simple game to, 255 to check the locations of this 11 half minus state, which we adjusted in our case uh, to, to 632 kV to fit our high energy lines. Uh, like uh, it was done in the case of, uh, in the case of uh, 257 rather to 253 uh, to, to to properly pin down the uh, Properly locate this 11 half minus state. So, uh, with this, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I don't know, I got confused uh, because of the, uh, because of this. I don't, in this computer, I don't have the PowerPoint, present, uh, PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint. So, all these figures and 
everything got uh, messed up and I, I, I got really confused. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rachel, for your presentation. Uh, don't worry. I, I think that uh, we uh, we have seen what what uh, what you wanted to uh, to show us. Huh. In my case, I, I understood uh, your presentation, so it was okay with the uh, with the figures and uh, all the stuff uh, moving on the on the presentation. Uh, 